Good night and welcome to the Sinaida Moria Show. I am your host, Sinaida. It's a pleasure to be here tonight on this lovely, lovely, lovely Tuesday, 15th, no, 15th March. Actually, it's my sister's birthday, and so I want to give a special shout out to my sister, Marina. Hope hoping that she had a wonderful day today. I really wish her happy birthday, but um, it's such a special day. And so I want to say that welcome to all the viewers tonight. We have a very special show lined up. Uh, it's going to be twofold. You know, um, we're going to start the show off. And as usual, I would want that you go ahead and share the live. We are also on uh, YouTube and on different other mediums. Uh, I don't have, I don't a, have a, a list of all the mediums, but uh, Marvin, Marvin. <laughs> we have we here on the other, other, other ones, ones as well. Yeah, so yeah. we're on, we're on, we're on quite, quite a number, number of mediums, so, uh, so it's not so only it's Facebook. Facebook. Facebook, Facebook that we're, that we're on, on, but, but normally, normally I'm so used, so used to used to streaming on you guys, guys um, uh, streaming, streaming via, via Facebook, Facebook primarily, primarily and Rumble, Rumble, but now, now we're, we're also, also on other, other mediums. Medium. So, so I also want to give a special shout out on, on to our to viewers, viewers on other, other mediums. mediums. Again, Again let us move right on ahead. Tonight we have, later on we're going to have Mr. Brian Plummer. Brian, Brian will, be will be on, on and, uh, and uh, we, will we will be discussing, discussing the, the, you know, about, you know, about, about love. love. We're going to be gonna discussing. Be discussing. And, 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 it's and it's not, not that, that love, love that you're talking about. It's, it's just it's when, 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 he when he comes on, comes on you're going to understand, understand the, the debt situation, debt as in debt as in money. All right? About money. And of course, how that will affect us, destiny, the future. Uh, it, was, uh, it was the, 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 the topic, topic definitely, definitely was, was put in a very, very poetic, poetic manner, manner. But, when but when we start, start discussing, discussing it then you will understand, will understand. but I but have, I have here, here on on the on show the right show now right my now, very good friend, friend Mr. Arthur, Arthur Saldiver he's He's an, He's attorney, an attorney, and Arthur is also, also an economist. An economist. Uh, uh, I, always I always say Arthur, Arthur and I went to school to together, together and, and, and so, um, so um, you know, we you know, go way, 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 way back. So, so Arthur, Arthur, we will be, we will be discussing, discussing, you know, something, something as a matter of fact, Arthur, Arthur will be the one leading in this particular part discussion, because, because as you very well know, the the Ukraine, Russia war that is happening right now, has, has affected, affected us, us, is affecting, is affecting us, us, and, and um, depending, depending on which fence you're on, on, some of you some might be on, on either, either side. side, I have friends on both sides, side. <laughs> however, however, that doesn't, that doesn't stop, stop us, us that, that we have to be fair to, fair to the people, to the people that, that are involved, are involved. And so, and so with that with said, that I want to tell you that, that um, tonight we will be discussing about that situation, so moving right along, uh, I, want uh, I want to, to again, again welcome, welcome, welcome to the show, Arthur. Arthur. Thank you very much. It's good to be here, Zanila. And I would like to also say good night to your viewers. Um, it's a pleasure to be in a position to share. Yes, yes, yes Arthur. Arthur. Yes, yes, thank you, thank Arthur. You, Arthur. And, um, and um, so, so we, we, we know, we know of the, situation the situation, and, I, and I, you and I spoke, spoke about, about what, could what could be done. done. No, no, please, people, people understand, understand that, that I can't, I can't say, say that, that um, I, will, I, will, I will be very objective, very objective as, it as it regards to the, to the, to the, to the war. war. I won't I even say which side I'm, you know, you I, I, I kind of lean towards. Just saying, though, that we will be discussing about the impact on the people who... Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, one second. Go to break, go to break, go to break. One moment, one moment. Yes. Okay. 
All right, guys. All right, guys. We just wanted. Um, they were saying there was an echo, and so we want to deal. We wanted to deal with that echo. Everything is okay. All right. So with that said, uh, I would just like to ask Kelvin. Kelvin, if you're you're checking, okay, just making sure. No. All right. We have to make sure that all the technicalities, you know, um, are worked out so that the, everybody can hear well. So let's go right ahead, Arthur. And again, good night to all our viewers. You know, I always acknowledge all of you, and I will be ensuring that you know everybody gets acknowledged because i must say that i appreciate every one of you who tune in faithfully to the show every week and um you know i'm i'm here i we have arthur on zoom our other guests will be in studio and so um you know i'm here i also i'm looking at arthur through this medium and so just bear with me all right, so Judah Boot, I must say um, thank you very much. So that's Jacqueline and Jake Boot. Good night, good night, my friends. Gonzalo Hereda, thank you. Good night, thank you for informing us about the echo. Geraldo Cook, good night, my friend, all the way from Toledo. Rachel and Elizabeth Balderamos, good night, thank you about the echo. Um, just go right ahead. Um, yes, so Arthur, everything is okay? Okay then, so go right ahead, Arthur, and let us go straight into your, first of all, let me just um, say that this is, a, this is our first time that we are multi-streaming. As a matter of fact, we are literally multi-streaming to, I'm sure, I know Marvin is what, how many, over how many platforms? Yeah, over 10 platforms. And so this is the first time we're doing this. So, uh, you know, certain kinks, but now we know if I have somebody on via Zoom, I have to mute because I'm listening here. So I have to mute so that we don't have the echo. Don't worry, it won't happen again. But just to let you know that um, this is, so this is, uh, this is very monumental in the, in the, in the, in the case for the Sinai Moya show. And while we do this, um, also Facebook is an entity, you know, YouTube is also an entity in terms of censorship. I know we're not talking about, you know, the job anymore, so things should get back to normal. But realizing that there is censorship, on the, particularly on those two platforms, of course, Twitter, of course, Instagram, TikTok, um, we have also branched out onto other platforms. All right, um, as a matter of fact, for all my friends, I just want to say this before we move on. <laughs> I, because I posted something, you know I post things and sometimes I post things as it regards to, you know, the job and um, so I got censored for another month. So if, you're, <laughs> if you see that I, I'm not posting anything and I'm not acknowledging you, it's because I, I'm, I'm again, I'm again in Facebook jail for another month. Okay, I was on there for like three months, so now I'm not here for another month. So I'm deciding whether or not I really want to be on that, but I can still go through the Sibylis Moya account, all right? So with that said, Arthur, my friend, let's move right ahead. You and I were discussing about the piece of, you know, the possibility of a relocation of uh, asylums, of, of those persons who may be affected from the war, and may want to relocate to certain, you know, even to Belize. So I want you to go right ahead and discuss that situation. I, are you hearing me? Um, are you hearing me, Arthur? Okay, I'm not sure. Arthur, are you hearing me? Are you hearing, are you me? hearing me, Arthur? Arthur? Yes, I'm hearing you. Okay, you so, so were you were hearing, you me, hearing just me just now? No, no, you were muted. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 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 All, right. all right. So let me so just, let me just so, okay, so, okay, so I have to stay muted. Speak to him. Hopefully, there's not an echo. Okay. 
Okay. All right. All right. So, so Arthur, Arthur, what I was, what saying, I was saying is saying that, that um, go, right go right ahead, ahead and let us speak, speak about, about the situation, situation of, of the, the uh, possible, possible asylum, asylum, the possible individuals who may be fleeing from the war and may need a place to stay. We see them trying to relocate to different countries, but this is something that you were looking at, and you were looking at a, a possible helpful, you know, um, gesture towards them. And we wanted to discuss that. So go right ahead, Arthur. Well, yes, um, Zenaida, the, the, the reality of it is this. I mean, and it's quite um, fortuitous that we're dealing with the budget period at this time. Uh, most people would know that the one of the impacts that we've been able to realize in Belize as a result of what's going on between the Ukraine and Russia has been the rise in prices in fuel. And fuel is basically the main catalyst to the rise in cost of living in Belize because everything that we have in terms of what we consume on a daily basis um, reaches the stores um, by virtue of trucks. Um, moving goods from the various ports and taking them across the country to the, distribu the distribution centers, um, Mr. V uh, um, supermarkets and grocery stores and corner stores, what have you. Now, at this present time, we have diesel being at about $13.29 or something thereabouts, which is a very high uh, uh, cost. and Trucks, the trucks that move goods use diesel by and large. So the, 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 the war or the, 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 the situation in Ukraine has had an effect. Belize has been considered a country with a very strong humanitarian record since 1978. And um, in, at that time when we had these various um, civil wars in the Banana Republic around us, um, our borders were open for persons from Salvador mainly, and thereafter Honduras, and um, even our neighbor Guatemala. I've had quite a number of um, its residents um, coming over to make homes in Belize and subsequently becoming Belizeans. A lot of being Guatemalan, uh, some have been able to slip in despite constitutional restrictions for that happening, but it has happened. And now we have, as recently as a few weeks ago, the announcement by the present administration that some 60,000 Central Americans will be granted amnesty in Belize. Uh, this certainly does not move the needle economically for us in any way, shape, or form, save and except, um, for the most part, it provides a greater burden on the social services because these people don't really bring additional income. Now, what anyone who is looking at an economy must appreciate is that there are two main factors driving any economy. The availability of labor and the availability of capital. So we have had in relation to the persons who we've granted amnesty to and by virtue of immigration situation um, relating to persons from across the various border, borders, um, a very high supply of labor, but very limited capital. Um, we have not had sufficient activity, economic activity to absorb the labor that we have within the country. As a result of that, there's high unemployment. And that high unemployment have given rise to crime in, 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 in many areas in the country. So we have at this present time the crisis in Ukraine, and I totally accept the position that we really should not be taking sides, whether it be with Russia or Ukraine. That's not our role. Our role as a humanitarian actor on the global scene is to recognize that there is a need for people to have their interests served in terms of providing for them some safe haven 
and allowing for persons who are in that need to be granted access to a place where they will be safe, affording them refugee status here at home. We know that our, our per capita uh, situation in terms of the, the, the land to people ratio is very low. Belize has the land area to accommodate more people. We have our situation, especially in the South, Toledo district is one of the districts with the highest land to people ratio. There are fewer persons per square mile in Toledo than anywhere else in the country. So it is my belief that if we were to allow for some 50,000 Ukrainians to be granted access and refugee status in Belize, they could be accommodated easily in the southern part of the country. And what that would do for us is that it would give us immediate access to international funding to allow for those persons to settle in Belize. That's a huge capital injection in the initial short term stage that would be a boost to the construction industry. That would be, be a boost to the employment situation for Belizeans across the country. That would be the impetus driving down crime across the country. Outside of that, in the medium, in the medium and long term, a move like this would elevate our status on the international scene. It will put us in a position to capitalize on international funding much easier than we have had access in the past. Because what it does, really, and we must appreciate who it is we are opening our borders to when we're talking about persons from Ukraine. We're talking about a highly educated population, a population that would be coming to Belize at least in the short term, to settle and create some semblance of normalcy for themselves, which would mean that they would want to make themselves as comfortable as possible within our local environments, which means that there would be a large-scale transformation of whichever area is designated for them to occupy. Now, fortunately for us, both the great United States and Guatemala has expressed openly their support for the people of Ukraine. And there are certain spillover benefits that could arise from Ukrainians being granted access in a large scale to Belize. Where, where the Guatemalan claim is concerned, okay. especially if they are situated in the south of the country. Guatemala will be hard pressed to continue to pursue the situation in terms of their claim at the ICJ. Mm -hmm. The United States would be hard pressed to allow Guatemala to continue with that posture. Okay. Because so nobody would want to see the Ukrainians suffer further. Well yeah, yeah. So we do know that, uh, with fairness, it is the Ukrainian people the war is in, but we also know that um, Russians are impacted as well. And yes. so, yeah. So just just so that it's clear that Russians are impacted. And, and what I'm saying here is simply yeah. this: would it be Ukrainians or Russians who are Are being impacted? We would have our borders open to accommodate. At the end of the day, it is basically a humanitarian gesture to allow for persons who are otherwise unable to have normalcy at home to be given the opportunity to rebuild and to have their lives be restored in a way that would allow for them to continue to be as productive as possible. But remember this again, there are various international donor agencies that, are, that is geared towards assisting these people 
in doing just that. And there are countries, in fact, I believe in the United Kingdom has had applications of more than 13,000 um, Ukrainians and only 50 were processed. Um, Poland has had well, certainly over, over a million. And um, there are a number of other countries that um, have been petitioned to, uh, to accept. Recently, I've heard of Costa Rica making a gesture to allow for Ukrainians to come to Costa Rica, with having them being transported directly from Ukraine to Costa Rica. So countries in the Central American region are looking to capitalize. Mexico has capitalized. Mexico has accommodated more than 20,000 Ukrainians since this dispute has started. And they are getting benefits. In fact, the English government has been offering 10,000 pounds per household that accommodate Ukrainians fleeing from the conflict. Could we not use $10,000 per Belizean household in the initial stage? Because certainly it will take some time for any community to be developed in the South to accommodate these people. So if it were that the government would see the wisdom in doing it, the initial uh, move would be to find families that have space in Belize to accommodate um, Ukrainians who may be coming in and wishing to come to Belize. We've seen, I think, at least one person coming from Ukraine to Belize and has she has expressed great excitement at the prospect of uh, being here. So there may be other like-minded persons in Ukraine who may see Belize as, as an attractive place to come to. And what when that happens, there is the fund um, from the the English government and there's a, a number of international uh, funds and donor agencies that are putting up sizable uh, financial compensation to families who are accepting these people in the short term. That's, again, a huge capital injection that would be moving the needle um, for our economy and would basically allow for us to really have a reset of our own in Belize where our economy is concerned. There's another thing to be considered here. Uh, um, one, one second, one second. I want, I want to just um, inform you that uh, Mr. Brian Plummer is in the house, um, and he, you know, Brian. I would want you to join him, but I'm not sure if he can hear. That's the thing. I'm not He's not hearing. So, so that's the thing. Um, so, Arthur, we're gonna. You're just hearing muffles. You, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna um, so we're gonna finish up with our turn a little while. Um, so just you know, since you're not hearing, um, and then so like just give us like yeah. I wish you could be a part of it. Then then it, but but if you won't be able to hear, that's a okay. We do have another mic in case you know, and then we could have um, we could try and mic you up. And we'll give you one of the headphones so you can hear what Arthur is saying. So you can join in because I don't want you to just sit. This show is, with, with fairness, we will be talking about the debt situation and so forth. So we're going to try and get Mr. Plummer um, with a... So, um, so yeah, so we can get one of the one of the phones and we'll just put, put, put that. I think that can happen, uh, Marvin. It can happen. Okay, so let's go ahead, Arthur, and then we'll make you up, uh, Mr. Plummer. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I sorry believe about that, that. Uh, what, what was stated earlier in the budget presentation was that we have a debt to GDP ratio of over 180 percent or something thereabouts. This move to accommodate 50,000 Ukrainians here would actually erase that and bring us back to to economic profit of zero across the board, and. Um, it is something I believe the government should seriously consider because what it would do is to not only increase the population pool, but it would increase the pool of educated and skilled persons within the country to actually make it um, feasible for greater development to take place within our borders. Uh, 60,000 uh, Central Americans don't do much for us. The prospect of China going into Taiwan is very great, given what's going on in Russia and Ukraine. And we know that invariably, should that happen, 
there'll be a large influx of Taiwanese to Belize. Uh, we have had a long-standing relationship with Taiwan, and that would not be a stretch to, to envision that should there be any kind of hostilities between Taiwan and China, that a large number of Taiwanese would wind up here. That does not do much for us either. Um, the, the, president, the president of China has publicly committed that by 2025, he plans to take back China. Publicly, I saw a video with him saying that. Okay. So that's not theoretical. Such a, okay. He made a public what, pronouncement. When did he say that? About a year ago or so. Okay. He made that. Right. He didn't put that he will take it, he said he will be reunified. Okay. He didn't that was the fine. Yes. I agree. So I agree. It's not theoretical. Publicly yes. committed yes. to take it back to Taiwan. Okay. So you right. see? And that was before Putin made his uh, move to take, uh, to go into to Ukraine. So I do believe that the Chinese timeline may moved up as a result of what's taking place now and what has been seen as an effective response, an ineffective response by um, the West and the NATO allies. So given that, we may be seeing more Taiwanese coming to Belize in the very near future. And that doesn't really do anything for us on the international scene. Because there's no real, there's no great, well, let me put it this way. Taiwan and China are basically the same people. Taiwan, you know, that they're Chinese. And there's over 2 billion Chinese in the world. Now, China has basically owned most of America's debt. So there's no, there's, there's no great, there will be no great outpouring support financially for Taiwanese coming over because they're not seen to be people in any real need. But certainly the Ukrainians uh, in their situation would be treated a, a much different, differently than the Chinese would. And certainly we need to have some kind of balance to a large influx of Chinese coming in. I do believe the Ukrainians would provide that. So we should really seriously look to make a move to capitalize on crisis that's that's there some may say that we are being opportunistic uh i believe that that's what any country seeking to rationally look at its self-interest should be doing belize is in need we need capital we need capital over an extended period of time uh, we need new money Tax money is not really going to move the needle for us when we are not expanding the tax base. Um, what has been done in terms of simply adjusting and raising taxes, all that it has really accomplished is to force people out of business and to inspire flight of capital. We need to reverse that. We, we need a new infusion of, of, of um, funds coming in. And if, in fact, it's, you know, it's, for some reason, um, in my view, I think a lot of people, you know, the, the leaning for the majority of people is support for Ukraine. All right? Um, not necessarily on my side. I'm just saying for the majority of people, I, I personally um, see it see the situation that I, I, I um, you know, empathize with the people of Ukraine, you know, greatly in terms of what, uh, um, and I'm not, I'm no big a fan, I'm no big fan of, of um, the President Putin. However, I do see why it is happening. I do see the situation in my view. I, I, and I had said it last time, you know, and I had mentioned it to my colleagues then that, you know, um, anybody would do what he's doing. You know, you don't, one thing, and let me say this, you know, if, if you have a house, you have a house, and you have a known enemy, a known enemy, in this case, the USA, you have a known enemy, always going to your neighbor, going to your neighbor's house, going to your neighbor's house, taking 
weapons, taping, stockpiling weapons of mass destruction to right next door to you, right in your backyard, really. And you tell your neighbor, in this case, Ukraine, hey, Ukraine, please hold it down, man. We already have this agreement. This agreement is from, you know, I don't know, where, where, what year was it? 1945, which, which year was it? And other, other, other agreements were made, you know, with Clinton. And before that, it was with President um, 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 Ronald Reagan and Gorbachev, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, uh, when, when, when Gorbachev was in office. And this agreement was made, but I see you're still bringing, you're still allowing, you know, uh, my enemy in this case. I'm just saying, this is what um, Russia would be saying, and this is you, though. Uh, you're allowing him to, to, to bring all these things in my backyard, and then I see you starting to bring all of his friends all of his friends with all their enemies you allow all of them in my backyard all of them they're right there how would you go to sleep at night knowing that your known enemy this enemy who wants to take you down and all of his friends all with their weapons are there and how, would you be able to go to sleep at night you know would you be able to go to sleep at night soundly or would you you, you're, you're talking to your neighbor, you're talking, your neighbor doesn't listen, and then your neighbor say, you know what? Yes, I had agreed that I won't, I won't pick up weapons out, but you know what? I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna apply for my, for my different weapon too. And I'm gonna bring my weapon too. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna apply for it. That's the way I see it. And you know, fear is fear. You see, I don't like the same when I say, get the devil with it, you, because I don't think the devil do anything other than something not good. But well, in this case, well, in this case, that's the way I see things. That's that's definitely well, and I, you have I to look at you have to put yourself Russia, in different people's shoes. I would I would look at my country's security and and try to do whatever it takes to ensure I protect the, the, the safety of my country, of my people. You understand? Of my assets, my country's assets. I would ensure I do that. So you have to look at the shoe of Russia as well. As much as you empathize with the with Ukrainian people, look at why this is happening and until you look at the history of why this whole, all these different pacts, all these different agreements were made, that's the only way you will be objective, that's the only way you will be fair and knowledgeable in terms of what decisions your own country should be making. Go ahead, Arthur. Right. Well, our country is um in their own rational self-interest, and certainly, I do not believe that Hold on. Hold on. reason. Um, yeah. But um, again, my interest here is not to 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 debate the merits or the merits of the actions mm -hmm. of Russia. I am just simply saying that this Belize has had a very strong humanitarian um, record. Um, we have been known to open our borders to people who have been. Um, fleeing conflict in the past, and we should not now turn our backs backs on that reputation. There is an opportunity. We've mainly done for it us. for our regional people, our regional, our mainly. neighbors, our, our regional Only. neighbors. Yeah. Mainly, but that doesn't mainly. mean that we should but, be yeah. so exclusively. Uh, um, certainly, um, we know that the Ukrainian population is a highly educated one. Uh, many of them, yes, may be um, Russian speakers, but many of them are also English speakers, so they can assimilate within the the the, 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 the country quite easily. And um, I do believe that their presence here uh, would be along the lines of a greater impact than that of the Mennonite population, who, when they came, were not um, by and large English speakers, but um, mainly... Of us, they spoke mainly a European, some mix of German and, uh, and, and other languages, uh, Eastern European languages. So, okay. We so you wanted to say something? Because I believe they would want to come here. I think they have their eyes on Europe. I don't think they. Listen. Go ahead. We don't know if they want or don't want. I'm saying we just we make the offer. Um, if we make the offer and say that we were willing to accept, we may get some. We already have one. You hear it? We already have one. 
So yeah. let's say we say we, we're willing to take up to 50,000 and 20,000 arrive, or 10,000 arrive. That 10,000 more than more persons than we've had, and that's still uh, a sizable uh, population uh, to form a community. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. You, he, when you talk, He's not hearing you because you, you don't have the Zoom. So you have to let me know and then I'll, I'll turn this on, okay? So if you want to say something, go ahead. You can go now because I unmuted, right? Otherwise, it's muted. He can't hear you. You fix I, it, he can hear. So you can. So I don't have to um, sh share, I, Marvin? I think that the, the angle is very innovative. You want to do something, you want to act. And as you say, you want to make a lemonade out of a line. But I think one of the things I, I, I don't think they would most of them would want to come here. Maybe they are okay, here. I'm not hearing because anything. They don't see opportunities here. They want opportunities unless they get some sort of opportunity and that will pass. Right? They won't just come here. Even when those Central American immigrants come here, the UN set up some sort of program and some sort of um, some sort of schooling and farming, and they get funded. The UN um, fund those villages in um, Belmopan, Salvopan, and those are more. More, there are more people who are familiar with us. I think the strangeness of us, we will have to do. a common culture, a common, just like we do with our Central American brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And they can, and they... And what she was saying was difficult for her yeah, when, she, when she first came here, here you know? You know uh, no, but no, I, I think she's, she's, you know, she's working and all that and so forth. But it is, but it if is, it wasn't it is she wouldn't have stayed. Yeah, and, um, but, but, I mean, these things can happen because, you know, I, I had one of my friends, he was Russian, and he had come to Belize, and, um, you know, he, he got used to it, I mean, you know, so I think it can happen, though, with fairness, it can happen, but to say that they would be looking to come to Belize, then that's a yeah, I don't think First of all, some of these You have people, to sweeten the pie too much. They like, they like their, um, their, their ID. Yeah. And, and all that and even they go to holidays in the Alps and these things and so Belize would have for something different yeah. you understand so so you are correct with that but feeling that um I, I think we can definitely still you know it, it is definitely an option and it is an option that we can look at so it's um it's something that I that that the government definitely um Arthur is it something that you you, you guys will be you'll be trying to put forth to the government, you and your because it is, it is that if, if, if in fact they haven't already been thinking about it, it is something I would hope. I would hope that they would be thinking about it. And but to, to, to answer the question, and it's a plumber for if we go that um, way, I would rather for what I did in the states. You attract the pre when America took in the immigrants from Germany, it was scientists, it was. Creme de la creme. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, yes and they didn't yeah. take off the street. Yeah. Immigrants, uh, the street vagabonds from Germany when the war finished. They took the best and the brightest. So there has to be a weed, you know, especially if we're taking in people that we try and get some of the be best people in terms of education and, and, and experience. Because yes. Maybe the, what they were doing in European. And uh, once you try and get some of the best people, then you'll be able to sweeten the pie because they have skill and they can contribute. And they have a marketable value. It's a, yeah, and it's a fun. Hmm. I view that as the ideal. However, the. Uh, yeah, yeah I mean, they, they would have to be a, a mix um, because I don't know if they 
you know, the idea would be, yes, you bring in all the, the skills, the, the skills you, know, you know, but some of those skills will probably want to go north, for I example. Say, say, yeah, they yeah. want to go to England and different yeah. parts of Europe, yeah. you know, it's so, 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 so I'm just letting you know. Yeah, I don't know that um, England and all those are in the country that have heavy intoxic. Listen, are you hearing Arthur? Right? In much uh -huh. in the United Kingdom, uh, France, and even Greece have seen a heavy influx of immigrants coming from Syria and other countries over the past uh, uh, decade. So they have had some reservation in opening their borders to Ukrainians. In fact, as I mentioned, uh, more than 13,000 Ukrainians applied to enter the United Kingdom. Only 50 were granted access. Yes. So England is actively marketing. Um, to other countries for them to accept um, Ukrainians. So I do believe if Belize made the offer, um, it would then be upon those European countries who want to to divert um, the immigration situation away from themselves to then seek to convince um, those responsible for organizing the Ukrainians fleeing the conflict to give Belize a try, even if on a temporary basis, as has been done in Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, the Mexicans have allowed them to come. They are, as I said, over 20,000 entered Mexico through Cancun. Many of them have bad cars and left to go to the United States, where they are granted asylum there as well. Mm -hmm. So, hey, if they want to venture north after coming to Belize, all power to them. It's the same that have happened with some Chinese people who came. Many Chinese have come to Belize and shortly thereafter made their way north and have gone into the United States. Yes. That's not our concern, but certainly once they come, we could benefit from the influx of capital that comes with them. Mm -hmm. So I don't see that as a negative. Yes. Um, it, it is worth the try. Yes. Put it out there, see what happens. Um, if we get a fraction, we still get something. Mm -hmm. okay. Something is better than nothing. Well, I agree. I agree with you. I think um, definitely we have opened our doors to other people. I, um, as I had mentioned um, in the show last last time, uh, in 1993, when I had gone to do my bachelor's degree in Washington, uh, I had friends from Bosnia and Serbia who were fleeing the then war, and they became my best friends. And uh, we did everything together. <laughs> everything. We, were, we hung out together, I mean, up to now. And I just want to say that I understand what they went through. They went through that war. It was an ethnic war. And it's something that is real. These people lost families. They lost their homes. They lost their livelihoods. It is really fled. And they, they were, of course, from Europe. And, you know, they were, in my view, they were very, very nice people. We got along very well. And, you know, uh, of course, I was in the U.S., so it's, it was from Europe to the U.S., you know what I'm saying? So there's a difference there, um, but from Europe to Belize, I, I, I think Belize, it, it, it would be different, but, but Belize is, I mean, it is a tropical paradise. So in terms of some, some of them looking at it as, oh, wow, it's a tropical paradise, because I've, I've managed to go... Like I told you, and I've, I've managed to, to be on every continent in, other than Antarctica. I've managed to meet people from all over the world um, in, their, at their, in their country, Europeans as well. And I will tell you that um, they love Belize. When they hear about Belize, they think Belize. And, you know, of course, those who may not know too much about Belize, and I tell them what Belize is about, I show them, I would show them photos, I would, you know, they were just in awe of Belize. You know, they were in awe of if just, so, if just putting the idea out there elevates the profile of the country in Europe, it may allow for more persons in Europe who may not have heard of Belize to consider Belize as a place to come to, to visit and find out what we're about. Belize has a lot to offer. We have had a history of stability in terms of go our governance. We have um, relative internal peace. Um, we have large swaths of the country that have very low crime. Now, certain areas have had elevations and spikes in crime. And you know, I won't call it crime wave, but um, 
it's beyond a wave in terms of certain areas, but by and large, the country is peaceful and um, filled with resources. Resources that persons from yeah. industrialized countries can come and readily um, yeah. utilize. Even though murder is not random murder, up. it's usually people so who involved in the underworld. By, them, by that happening, we invariably benefit because we need more than grocery stores and chicken joints in Belize, and we need people who can do more than that. And I, I certainly believe that you... I said, that listen, you listen, 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 um, Arthur, um, the, 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 the U.S. for a while, the U.S. for a while, they, they have, for example, they have different visas, different category of visas. So they have an... Um, well, with this new administration, it, 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 initially it was like open border, but they have really cracked down on things right now. They seem to have wanted open border, but with, with, you know, what we're seeing is a little, it's a little different. They're, they're buckling up. Election, election. Yeah, 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 because yeah, the American people don't really want that, like, not all, at least, you know. And so it's, um, they're, they're trying to balance it out. But what I want to tell you is that, as we all, as some of us know, the visa situation. So the U.S. now, we know fully well that the U.S. have this whereby they have special visas for the skilled, for, for us professionals. And so, and even for us who have studied in the U.S., I think, I think they have, for those who study, have at least one degree in the U.S. You, ha you are in a special category. And then for us who have two degrees from the U.S., you're in a category whereby... They give out. They give you. They have. They have visas set aside for people like, people like myself, who have, who have degrees two degrees from the, from US. the U.S. And now and these people, people now come in. Those, those people that you're, that you're talking, talking about, about now, if they, they have, have those, those kinds, kinds of degrees, degrees coming to Belize, to Belize uh, uh, I, I, definitely I definitely really feel just, just like what the U.S. US does. does oh, Penny, they, they have a. The U.S. have a special visa program. And, and numbers, numbers of visas, of visas set, aside set aside for first persons, persons like myself. The same way we could do for these people that you are talking about. Um, because you are correct, Belize is a developing country. We cannot just have persons who, you know, they're unskilled in some cases, or maybe they, you know, um, they bring nothing, like literally nothing, like no money, nothing. Um, and they come to Belize, and it, it, is, it is a burden, it is a strain on the economy, on the scarce resources. They go to our schools, they, 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 they get to our medical, uh, use our medical facilities. Some people will say they get the jobs, or, you know, but that's, I mean, depending on how you look at it, they, you know, they, 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 the little fast food joints, you know, predominantly them. So, Belizeans, some, some people would say some Belizeans have become marginalized, right? right? Some Belizeans, Bana, Gro Belizeans, have become marginalized. No, if we could get a mix of that so that you will have additional persons, an additional amount of in influx of not only uh, refugees, but influx of, um, of funds, whether or not it's the United Nations, to, to United UNHCR, yeah. Yeah. yeah, coming in and and and, and um, giving the government um, certain funds to help relocate these individuals. I mean, and those with those individuals having skills, helping to 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 develop new factories. You know, new factories, new technology, new companies. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, it really help develop Belize alongside, you know, you know, us who are already skilled. You know what I'm saying? And 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 and, and helping to bring more opportunity to our Belizeans who, you know, um, need that support. You understand? Because we are the ones who have to try and always be helping and trying to bring along and 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 and. and help as best we can those Belizeans who may not be, you know, well skilled or, or may not really see themselves as, you know, um, having certain opportunities. So I fully support what you're saying and I hope that it will happen, um, Arthur, but we want to move ahead now. So, um, 
Mr. Mr. Plummer, are you ready? We are going to discuss about we, so Arthur, you're an economist like myself, and so um, I think Arthur, if, if Arthur can stay on, that would be wonderful and, and interject. Hopefully, Arthur, you can hear what we're saying. Yeah. Okay, believe us here. Okay, so uh, what we were going to discuss as well is the money situation. Right. Arthur. Globally and locally, what mm -hmm. I've observed is that. We have an unprecedented amount. Hold on, Mr. Plummer. With fairness, I have to properly introduce Mr. Plummer. Mr. Brian Plummer, no stranger to the show. He has been on already. Uh, he is an educator. He has. You have been an educator for how many years? 29 years. 29 years. Wow, that's a good that's a long time. Okay, all right. And uh, he has done manuals in physics, physics. chemistry. So he's, yeah, and then you teach math, math and, and science. science, math and science. And so he is someone, he has also authored different articles in different Caribbean newspapers, and of course the Amandala, in, including the Jamaica Gleaner and some of the Trinidad others. Express, Trinidad Express, Bahamas, yeah. Yes. yes. And so I've, I've, I've managed to really, um, you know, speak with Mr. Plummer. And of course, he has checked CXCs and so forth. And I must say that I, I enjoy um, discussing with him because he's an extremely intelligent person. I like talking to intelligent people. <laughs> so I, you know, I like to discuss and, 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 and hear what others have to say. And so with that said, we have... Just, just like, like what we did, we learned learn with Arthur, because Arthur is one of those other brilliant minds that Belize has. And and, um, and, and, and so, so, Mr. Plummer, go right ahead. All right. What, what we have noticed, everybody, is that something is not right. Everybody noticed that. The COVID is just one part of it. But what is the root cause of this social upheaval? The global order, the Ukraine war, everything is related. It's unprecedented global debt is about 342%. And the U.S., which holds the world reserve currency, and we spend a lot of time on the U.S. because it holds, has over $30 trillion in debt. It's about 129% of GDP. We in Belize also has a similar percentage to GDP as you guys. We have about 128, the last time I checked. 128 of GDP. Very similar. Now, one of the things is that when you look at history, all the social changes were caused, caused by, by death. death. For, example, For example, the French, the French Revolution. Revolution. The France, France couldn't buy the land and then they couldn't pay and, and they brought hardship and, and so on. So on. People were very long and so on. The American, the American Revolution, Revolution again, the debt, the tax they owed to King James, King James, King James, James Charles, 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 Charles is always about, about debt. Right? right? When the, when when the, the Russian Revolution again hardship due to debt, it's, it's always, always about, about debt. That's why I observe. So now, no, no. when, when we, we see, see, I come I to the premise, premise that, that COVID, COVID, the Ukraine war, and, and everything, everything that's happening is conjoined by a, a, a part of dealing with the debt situation. The U.S. was in recession from February 2020, officially. And so whether they had COVID or not have COVID, they would have had a recession. Because COVID really came in earnest in March, in this part of the world. It really picked up in March. So pre-COVID, including Belize and America, around March it really hit. So obviously, COVID did not cause economic hardship. It was a good cover for it, 
Because you can say it's COVID that caused it, and you could print and everybody understand. Like we didn't believe, we believe print 150 million dollars, right? Excess to the central bank. From which is a government. 80% of the money, the US dollar in existence. From January 2020 to now, 80% was printed, was created. Over 20 trillion dollars was created from January until now. From January to about 21 trillion the last time I checked. US dollar was created just from just January, January 2020. That's, That's never, never happened, happened before. before. In the, In history, the history of the United States. States. Never, 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 never. Not for not World War I, not, not for World War II. They, they did not print so much money. money. This is unprecedented. It. So obviously, so it's not that COVID, COVID is not the cause of it. It's their structural problems. That they have in US dollars throughout the world. No, a uh, twenty trillion they printed twenty point zero. They have a um, right a um, uh, twenty point eight zero. There is about roughly roughly about. Yes. They're buying it with it, but they do it through a where the elect the banks buy it and they buy back the banks. They buy it from the bank. They yes. buy it directly. Yes. So this has never happened. People US had no problem selling the debt to people. No problem, you understand? Yes. US debt is seen as a safety event yes. for more people. That's right. But now they are buying their own debt. Yes. They own about 20% of their own debt. Yes. And so that is telling you how start. But not only that, what is happening now with, with China um, proposing and, and going along with uh, Saudi Arabia uh, and uh, Russia to say that the, because you know the petrodollar, that the, the China would be able to pay for uh, a, a oil in, in their own currency to both uh, Saudi Arabia and to Russia. No, people, that's a big deal. Huge. You have to understand what the dollar means and the fact that when they started to use the dollar, um, it, it was known as the petrodollar. And when Nixon, 1971 actually, that's when Nixon start, start discussing and then afterwards, correct this. Yeah, but go ahead. what happened is this. So, we, you have to notice that, obviously, Life is not the same in any country in the world. Yes, yes. You live in. And Africa, I think, is affected as far as they are where there's only a few people in the place and us. No matter where you live in Russia, China, the yes. whole global economy is in a mess. Okay. And so it's because in 1944, yes. we had what we call the Bretton Wood Agreement when the US dollar officially came in the world. But it was backed by gold. 
right? But in on August 15, 1971, the U.S. actually came off of the boat. It actually defaulted on its debt. Yes. Because the promised people could exchange their debt for gold yeah. and said, no more. Yeah. Because because of the war too, they they were the one financing the war. All the time when the U.S. have to finance the war, they had to pay. And when they had to be using the gold, you know, and they had to use up their gold reserve, that became a problem. And that's why they came, you off, it. came yeah. off it so that they could start to print. I mean, that was not part of the agreement. That was not a part of the Bretton Woods agreement. However, that's what they started to do. I mean, come on now, you know, you can do it. So why not do it? That was their view. And did they did. Yes. And then the next thing when you look at history, the one who will be history, but well, history teach you what, what's going to happen because human beings don't change. We still love We might have been kind of like, but we still love, we still hate, we still get jealous. You see, if people have human beings, essentially haven't changed. It's just decoration. Yes. And uh, throughout history, the country, that has the most global trade becomes the ruler of the world. It doesn't matter when. That's why the US became the ruler of the world. They were like China, they were the factory of the world. The only thing is now listen to these people. And what he said is correct, but listen to what is happening now. Now when we look at the the oil, the gas, what is happening now is that when before the U.S. used to buy the majority of the gas from, for example, Russia, from Saudi Arabia. Now, the, it is China yeah. who is buying the, the, the majority of the oil from Russia and, of course, um, 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 Saudi Arabia. So, if it is China, uh, of course, the U.S. for one point they were starting to get, you know, um, um, energy energy independent under under with fairness under um, President um, Donald Trump, under him, true fucking, it was under President Donald Trump that he was pushing to ensure that they could become energy a a, 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 a energy independent, and they achieved that. Now. Uh, so, so that's good for the Americans. However, Saudi Arabia had seen that and said, hey, well, you're a man, and you're not buying as much as you right. used to. Right. You see? Local, what people don't understand, just like in Belize, you have certain businesses support certain parties. In America, the oil people are usually Republicans. So when the Republicans are in the greater support, when it, yes. the, and the Democrats, they are the tech people, Google. It's so crazy. And they are especially in Texas, and they are, come on, and you have to know where we are talking about. Texas. Democrats, it is a little bit of a couple That's why you see they're going green. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like in the news, you know how politics is always going on. Which is, which is, with fairness, is my view. You might, you might not like fossil fuels, you might not want us, want, want, want to go and continue using oil and things like that. However, you can... Yeah. 
Yes. And the Chinese done seventy trillion dollars daily. You may say it's not exact; it's an average. Yes. So what has happened is that there is becoming a parallel system. Mm hmm. Yep. Even we have forty percent of the world supporting Russia directly. This is China, Russia, and even India. I was surprised when India it, they are they have the public statement that they are creating an alternative financial system so they could still deal with Russia. Did you also see that Israel is, so I are, mean, is kind of leading? Look at, right. look at the talks with Israel as I well. Let me tell you why. <laughs> there is no way, let me tell you why, there is no way Belarus could be Russia, China, and those countries. India, combined. yeah. Is it possible? Yeah. The, the US. It doesn't produce anything again. It needs those people. Imagine if China stops selling things to the US. They will care and buy the cheap clothes. <laughs> Walmart will be closed. Yeah. They, remember when they were crying for PPE when COVID? They couldn't yes. produce their own. Yeah, it's so China. Obviously, they have no production capacity. Yeah. They depend. They don't, they don't. Even when, it, because they are automakers, you understand, with fairness, you know, um, automobile has always been, you know, one of their main sales for so long, but since Ford. But exactly, and with that, you know, a lot of the, 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 the parts for the vehicle actually come in from, from, from abroad. So, the human capital they don't have. See, just as a teacher, I have experience and knowledge that. I can get in a classroom. People who are actually doing a job, they surpass university education because university prepares for the world of work and when you get here, you learn a little more. So, the US don't have the experience of factory, you don't have much factory workers. One second, one second. Is, is the audio, you guys hearing the audio? Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay, go ahead. Okay, all right, go ahead. The long and short of the story is that there is a new world all coming. That is why you have Schwab, Schwab, and those people from the world talking about the Great Reset. This is not new, I read history. Most people don't know the French Revolution was a reset. reset. The Jacobins talk about the reset. They change the calendar. That's why we have the metric system. They wanted to get rid of all religious things. The metric system is to move the world scientific. This is what these guys are trying to do. They're carrying it step two. Yeah. Let me just let me just interject though, because I always um, try to ensure that I bring in our viewers. Um, first of all, good night, Nancy. Good night, my friend. Good night, Keenan. Keenan Flowers. Good night, Anthony Bennett. Good night, my friend. Um, all right, so what Gon Gonzalo was saying, but I don't think somebody <laughs> agreed with him. Gonzalo was saying, history has proven that whenever and wherever white people show up in mass, they don't, <laughs> I don't know if I should leave, they don't want to leave and eventually takes over control. So we should not open that door. We will end up losing far more than we gain. All right, that's what um, Gonzalo said. Um, and then a... Uh, Terry, good night. Terry um, Chinchia, good night, good night. Um, Nancy agreed. <laughs> um, Gonzalo said no one had sympathy for the women and children of the Donbass area of Ukraine when the Ukrainian government was shelling and killing them by the thousands. But because the U.S. puppet Zelensky was doing it, the world didn't care. So Zelensky was the one dealing and shelling, uh, uh, killing these people in Ukraine. But they, these people were closer to Russia. They were they, they speak Russian. They're more aligned. They're more they more see themselves as Russia, as Russians. And then um, Nancy de Paul says, "Right, sis, um, people need to wake up and know what's happening." That's right. Uh, um, Rachel, thank you about the no volume, my friend. Um, then Judah, Judah Booth said, uh, and this is just a reference about the white people. Wow, that comment, you know, is ignorant and prejudiced on so many levels. With that attitude, this country will never grow or prosper. 
And then Gonzalo said, of course, you would say that white folks don't like to hear the truth, even if it's proven history. I'm going to speak on that right now. Um, of course, you, yeah. So, um, Judah, the truth, according to whom? Love you anyways, bro. Let me just say this, though, that, um, you know, this country is made up of people of all nationalities, of all color. As a matter of fact, a lot of us are mixed. All right? A lot of us are mixed. As a matter of fact, and some matter of fact, um, Gonzalo, with fairness, Ishmael Heredia, just your name alone, it tells me that your ancestors are also from Spain. My father's um, um, people were from Spain. And with fairness, Spain is a part of Europe. Okay, Spain is a part of Europe, and as a matter of fact, when you go there, they see themselves, they, they are considered white. They are considered Caucasian. So technically, that's why when you hear about Creole, of which I am a Creole, you hear Creole are mixed with, and you hear black, you know, Creole, you know, black, European, white. You understand? So you're mixed. So with fairness, we are mixed. A lot of us already have um i'm not sure yeah european you already hear europe we a lot of us already have european in us we are we also have white in us while we are now brown because we're mixed we still have european in us and i can i can tell you that because on my father's side you know um they're primarily European in the sense, I'm just telling you. So I'm just saying in terms of, and my father never left. His, his people came from Spain. He, you know, they came from Spain, they journeyed, boo, 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 boo. They never left. You are correct, they never left. But I am an offspring of, of that as well. You know, yes, I, I may be brown now, and, and you know, because I'm mixed. But you are correct, they never left. And, I think people, you know, I, I, I think I, I, I'm okay with Belize, you know what I'm saying, I love, I love Belize, and, and, and if you look at the country, you see a lot of people are mixed as well, you know, so I just want to tell you that nothing wrong, as a matter of fact, nothing is wrong with us living together in harmony. Now, I do have an issue with the fact that if they would come here and not, you know, not, 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 not interact and, and, and assimilate with the people if that is what would happen then that's that's where i see it could be problematic you know if they i mean right now you know i have a lot of friends who are mennonites a lot of friends they have their community but with fairness to them there's some who may not assimilate that much but a lot of them assimilate very well and i can tell you because I, I think you know Cultural, yeah, their way of life, their food, what they do, they hang out, you know. Religious. Religious. They, you know, they farm or they do the, Yeah, some of them are Puritans as well. Yeah, yeah so it's different reasons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is religious. So, so I just wanted to put that in there since, since, since with our chat, you know, we have um, persons of different, you know, views, and that is fine. That is lovely. That's what we need. You understand? And I, one of the things is that they, just to kind of on the race thing, they don't want to have the race the human race. There's no, this race thing is a social construct. Mm -hmm. And you can look it up. In 1995, Stanford University had over 100 yeah. top geneticists and mm -hmm. anthropologists who that they no race. So they took genetic things from a white man, black man, yes. and they took some white people who had more similar genetics with other black people. Yeah. That they were we mixed like white some beans. No, 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 be. You understand? As a matter of fact, yeah. As a matter of fact, because we created it. 
And even you, you guys, you guys know fully well that when so we, even race, but hold on, when we go abroad, and a lot of us, we, we can attest to it, when we go abroad, unless we open our mouth, they think we are, for example, Puerto Rican, Cuban, Mexican, yes. Mexican, and all these things, you understand? So, Yes, yes, so exactly. So, so, so it's, it's, it's just it's social, exactly what you're saying. But, but I want us to go. You spoke about cryptocurrency, and a lot of our people do not understand what is cryptocurrency. They have this central bank of central bank called the international bank, right? The bank of international settlement. This. They proposed in a paper that I read that the world should move towards digital currency because it's easier to transact. Yes. So if you look throughout the world, whether it's Jamaica, in fact, Bahamas have a digital currency called the San, Barbados, Belize, every way is going digital. The US put forward the paper. The whole global world are going to go into a digital currency. It's like the COVID thing, you know, everybody will wear their mask, it's lockstep. They have decided that the world will move towards a digital currency yes. and a digital ID. Mm -hmm. You'll find in Belize, after the digital currency, they will digitize our social security card. And simplify it. Okay. <laughs> to make you understand, they are digitized the COVID vaccine certificate. Yes. So that it can be easy, the information can be accessible on the network and mm -hmm. you can control it. Yes. Right? Yes. The, the Central Bank of, of England said, I read an article that the advantage of digital currency that gives government more control. And now BTL will be, or uh, they've already right. rolled out their. The 22nd? The, did the you, did you the wallet? They, they did what they call a beta test. Okay. Where you. Testing. Yes. They call it beta testing. Beta testing. Yeah. But they got an official announcement in 20 seconds. Yeah. They did a beta testing. There are people who are using it, but it's going to be official. Announcement. What's your thoughts on that? I think, I personally think that one is dangerous because you have little control over it. It has to be centralized. They could cut it out and they know too much about you. It's like using a credit card. It works. Yeah, when no. you use a credit card, if you ever use one, you have the date, the time, and when you buy everything on it. Yeah. Man, maybe you buy something where really you want people to buy. <laughs> right? Yes. But it's public knowledge that yes. most people see. So, one, privacy is history. One, is the digital so They don't know exactly what you buy and what they do. Yes. Two, they can cut it off any time they want. Right? For whatever reason, now, just the example is what happened in Canada. They cut off those people's money. Mm -hmm. That's going to happen if you do something that the government doesn't like. The GoFundMe money, yeah. remember? Yeah. Recently with the, with the Canadian um, Freedom Truckers. Yeah, I think it's dangerous, and I think we should not fully participate. Keep out as long as you could. Or not put all your money in one Try basket. It, it's nothing wrong with it as a supplemental. Digit wallet solely. Nothing is wrong with you it. You know? Inherently. Yes. But well, something is wrong with it. Only when that. People, when people control it, because yeah. the people are flawed. Yeah. And Belize, is America, Belize is a small community. Yes. Where everybody knows everybody else. And we affect each other greatly. Yes. So it will be worse for Belize because if I say something, it will affect the government in Belize. I make a public pronouncement. Yes. Because yes. we are a small community. But if I say something in America, it wouldn't affect the government. Yeah. Not at all. Yes. So there's, there's no push, it's no important here. Yeah. Yes, yes. Because of a small population. So that's one thing. Two, and these people that the so called global elite, they have a plan. Yes. They want to have, so they say by 2030, I'll have the World Economics Forum. You own nothing.
thing and you'll be happy. The most important thing to 
a human being is food. Food. Money is fiction. It's a narrative. Food is what's important. Part of the industrial revolution was to move people away from farmers. That's why they get by all the farmers. They want everybody urbanized. Yes. Because they government control it. But if I could feed myself, which government could control me? Yeah. The, the, the feeding of yourself is the most important way to fight. Yes. We have to be able. Why do you think the Belize government can push around the mainline community? Yeah. As when they want to do the mass mandate and the man, mandatory vaccine. We need a food. Why do they do that make a rule for the mainline? Right? Yeah. Why? Ask yourself that. Yeah, I mean these people are the main people who are who are feeding us. I mean, so what we would we do? <laughs> even if we said okay, even if the government said, well, you know what, we're gonna deal with you guys, and it takes a while for for crops to start to, to be planted, yeah, to be to grow, to, to harvest exactly. So that wouldn't have been possible either. So don't let anybody do food. Yeah. And that's why people, that's why countries for a long time, one of the main things that they, 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 they fought to ensure for their country was um, food security. Food. food security has always yeah, been at the top of their list. And when a country, you know, start to wean away from that and not ensure food security puts itself in a very precarious situation, it, you know, and I think that um, even in Belize, you might say, okay, we have a lot of farmland and you see things being farmed, but are we truly, uh, uh, do we have food security? So no. Uh, no. Central American immigrants. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the and things so that we do plant, um, we do export with fairness. Mm -hmm. So when we have our orange juice, our bananas, you know, our sugar, those are main or traditional crop. Those are the ones that have the bigger markets. They're exported. Even the cooperatives, for example, when it comes to lobster and so forth, those also are exported as well. So, I mean, we do have here as well, but I'm just telling you some of the bigger, some of the more known traditional uh, crops, uh, commodities, those are exported. But the others, we import. Come on, go and look at the grocery store and see how much of those things are grown stuff, are, are, are manufactured here. As a matter of fact, I saw one of my friends recently, he said, you know, he's, competed against, he's competing against um, products from uh, Grace Kennedy. Yeah. So this person, Mr. Harrison, said, well, you know, come on, look at this. This, I think Grace Kennedy has been around, I'm not even sure how long. Oh, 19, years. Yeah, like long time, yeah. like over, I don't know, 50 years or yeah. more, I don't know, a long time. So they have to be competing against these, against such an entity. Um, so he's saying, you know, come on, look at this. So it is real. Uh, we know, we don't have to move. They have massive support at the government. Yeah, they have. They do have, they do they have, do and, have, and that's what helped them out initially. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so now when it comes to food security that you're talking about, it, it, it would have to be, and you didn't say the word security, I'm putting the yeah. word security, you know, it would have to be something whereby our, it's the policies. And yes, I do see with fairness, the Minister of Agriculture, Jose Mai, stepping up and trying to open up the doors, uh, more so of Mexico, I believe Guatemala, you know, I think, was it El Salvador? I'm not sure, but I do know he's, he's trying to delve in and more, you know, to our, to our, um, to our neighbors in the north and, you know, and I, I must say, and our, our, our Central American neighbors, and that's a good thing. That's a, good thing. That's a very good that's thing. But what they need to do in that is that the financial infrastructure is not backing, like for example, if you go for a loan at DAC and you tell them farming, they won't help you for the most part. Mm -hmm. If you go for a loan at Belize Bank or Heritage, you know, so the financial infrastructure yes. has to be put in place. Yes. Where, you see, in these days, in Google, 
He started from the 1990s, he didn't make a profession after 2000, after the government helped it out with some contracts and yes. so on. Most businesses fail. Yeah, because they, 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 they put in protection, they, protection to them, fail. protectionist policies, and that's what helped them. But um, when you're supposed to be liberalization, mm, liberalization and yeah. that, that has helped globally, bigger, yeah. bigger corporations yeah. and yeah. so forth, that's what globalization has done. And so when you're liberalizing, you know, um, trade and all these policies and all these tariffs and all these everything. It really, it's the bigger ones that, that get affected. And while we would say that, you know what, there are always niche markets, and there are niche markets that, 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 that you can try to get into, but to a great extent, it usually benefits the larger corporations so and entities. Yes, yes, yes. That was an initiative from them. Yes, yes. They encouraged us. Yeah. And now they told us, no, 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 there was bad money around the way. Yes. So they will give us a niche market for a while. Yeah. But eventually they want to take that over too. Yes, yes. Because everything, see, globalization really means centralization. Mm -hmm. That will be centralized by the global elite. When you look at it, Look at, look at the WHO since COVID just finished uh, winding down, it's dying down. The WHO is mostly controlled by pharmaceuticals and corporations. In fact, Bill Gates is the largest donor after the United States. Yeah. So, what you have to understand, when you hear the WHO, when you hear the CDC, uh, the FDA, the some government, yeah. When you have the Federal Reserve, the some government, yes. but they are funding, 80% of the funding of the FDA comes from pharmaceutical companies. Yes. So they are not government. They are actually private. Well, private, yeah. private, yeah. private, private partnership, really. Private, PPP. And, and it's not dominated by government. It's dominated. The government gives a stamp of approval of people find it acceptable. So when you hear the dumb, when you hear the United Nations do one thing for this internet, think big business in Yeah, because because listen, you you bring up something very well. Um for a great extent people would think of the United Nations as yeah. primarily those countries and no, government. But really when you look into it big indeed and, and I had that on the show, it's big business that that these individuals are the ones who finance to a great extent these things. No government do do some financing, come on now. But certain of these platforms, and, and you did say, like the World Health Organization is financed pre predominantly. You, yeah, then you have Bill Gates. Um, good night, Adolfo Carlos Garcia, my friend. Good night. He said good night to the good guests night. as well. And um, another great show. Once again, thanks for bringing good, um, good, good, good awareness for the ones that need it, like me. Yes, basically, good night, Adolfo. Um, yeah. And what one of the things we need to understand now, the next step is that they want to digitize money, they want to have central control. Yes. Right? This COVID thing is an experiment to see how far we will stand our authoritarian government. I was blown when government told me I can't go to 7 o'clock. I can't go to 7 o'clock. Something wrong with this car. In fact, it would make sense that we can't go out in the day because there's less traffic at night. So, and then it makes sense you don't lock down on a Sunday because people barely move on a Sunday in the day. Yeah. You lock down on a busy day like Friday. Yeah. So I said, this is logical. Yeah. It doesn't make why we do lock down on the day that's the least. least yeah. You, you go to church on Sunday, yeah. you go to church. That's what you, you well, not everybody, but you, you yeah. go to church. Yeah. Maybe yeah. 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 Yeah.
Light, 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 light. Everybody knows that. And nobody is influxing into the city yes, to work or living out. Hot bar is spread of the so-called COVID no. energy. Oh, it's foolish, but, um, but so, what they were saying, you know, you go to people's test. house, family's house, and yeah. you would is convey. Is it a test to now be to see how far it's like I like you? I love your hand. See how you respond. I want to see how far I could go. Mm -hmm. This COVID thing to me was a test yeah. to see how far they can go yes. in total control of the human being. Yeah. You didn't own it by the government own it and you have to take a vaccine kind of tell it. It's a test. Yes. This has never happened in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Never, 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 never. Yes. Right? So you have to know that they are testing because they want to have total control mm -hmm. of us. Yes. And they will continue to push in that direction. Mm -hmm. Everything they do is to push in that direction. We they have control yes. and they will own anything, everything we will own nothing. Okay. That is their plan. They said it. It's not you say it. We have to understand, like I tell you, the main and good presence out there, the main thing you have to know is that you could feed yourself and your family. Mm -hmm. Now, my advice is this. In Nigeria, I have a lot of Nigerian friends. Yes. Even teachers, because the pay is so small, have a small home garden. Yes. And public officers. So Correct. You, you need to start to plan something, even if it's not a lot to do. Fully agree. Plan. I always push that. Yes. Yeah, yes. I always, I always push that. I know we want to live in the city myself. I don't want to live in the city myself. I don't want to live in the city myself. I don't want to live in the But at some point, you need to have food. Yes. Because the food. Russia, for example, these people are planning this. Yeah. Russia is part of the scheme. It's like. And Russia is one of the, and Ukraine with fairness are like the breadbasket of Europe. Yes. Let me explain something to you. The way the world works, just like how UDP and UP are both heavily influenced by Michael Ashcroft, there is no, they are not competing, not at all, it's a flow shoe. They work for the same boss. Mm -hmm. The boss said, if you don't like this one, he will give this one. And when you give it to this one, the boss will give you the next one. <laughs> the same thing that's happening in the global arena. Both the, the president of Russia yes. and the other world leaders are controlled by the world economic forum, or influenced by the world economic forum. Yes. And their plan is to justify, just like with COVID, that we are going to have to suffer yeah. and we are going to have to have pay a high price. Yeah. That is coming to Russia is the number one in 2020 supply of fertilizer. Russia next to Saudi Arabia is the number two. After Saudi Arabia, number two supply of oil. Russia is the fifth exporter of a long pump. It is the bread basket of the world. Wheat. Wheat, yes. And about 30% of the world we between Russia and Ukraine is produced. So obviously no matter, don't forget what I tell you, you learn anything from this, is it anything is that food is what you need. You do I don't need any clothes. I could look it up but I need food. So they understand that food prices will go up by Christmas. I'm not talking about by what you see now. Food prices in the last case will almost double, double by Christmas. Yeah, that's what it said. By yeah. double. Yes. So you know that. You know what you have to face, right? You know why they're doing it. It's all about control. control. If yeah. I am this when I use COVID as an example, when the government our government did it for you all show the world they have to see this. But now the government said the tacos, they didn't care for the tacos for like three weeks or a month or like that. And I could go into 88 or go, these are those big stores, where it's more dangerous than in the open air with the tacos. I said, this is not about health. This is about making people dependent on government because those are independent business people and their business will go in. 
Yeah. And after that, they have to get pantry and so on. Yeah. So I realized that it isn't about health because this is the open air, less people on the top of stand yes. than in glory. So if it was about health, we wouldn't be able to go into glory. Yeah. That's a day early. And, and that is the whole purpose as to why the U.S. dollar, I mean, is, is in a predicament because they went ahead and they printed $20 trillion, $20 trillion in 2020, 2021, and now they're still doing it, yeah. but in two years. And they did it primarily also to ensure that they can give money to their citizens that so that they can stay at home, be dependent, be controlled, be locked up in their homes, and they did it so that the people wouldn't wouldn't rebel. cry and rebel. So so that's what they did. And in the in, in the process, so so you have a lot of controlled people now. People say, you know, they're sheep. So you have a lot of sheep. And, that, and, and some of them still don't want to come out. I had particular friends who, men, they were happy, happy, happy. They, they didn't even want to go to work. They were so happy with their money. And oh gosh, they, they were so, yeah. oh, they were so happy, you know. And now it's, it's not easy because now they also have their debt now that they still have to pay now. And, and, and things have added up. So when they felt that, oh, it was good, not paying then, now they come back now and they are struggling. They are actually struggling. So for us to leave ourselves open and ever fall into a situation whereby, you know, we become dependent on government. That's, That's the future. We, the we cannot allow that. And, and I've always said it, and I'm glad you brought it up. Food security, um, the planting, ensuring that you're self-sufficient goes a long way and I've said it over and over. You have your your backyard, you have pots, pans, buckets, you start to ensure you do your planting because every day, I mean my gosh, it's like when you put a crab in water and you put that crab in water and it's cold water and you put a and you turn on the, the stove and uh, slowly you turn on and the water starts to get wet um hot and warm and then warm and then hot and then hot and then afterwards the poor crab can't jump out the poor crab dies that is what is happening to the masses of us that is what is happening to to a lot of us i'm not saying myself but i'm just saying to a lot of us it is happening that we have we we are put in a situation whereby they have instituted all these controls on us and some people were so happy with their you know with the little money that they got every two weeks from government my gosh they were in twos and they didn't have to work on a pantry and they become became so independent but imagine they put you it's like you're you're like this crab and so you feel all comfortable and you feel all happy but afterwards when the heat goes up you will suffer you will suffer and you will not be able to survive because it will be survival of the fittest survival of the smartest as well survival of the wisest survival of those people who will prepare and those of you who may be lazy and i will say this outright you're lazy some of you who may be lazy and don't want to to put in the effort for example to ensure that you know your um your 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 you 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 become you know you have your little backyard garden and so forth and you won't be able to afford food then you will fall into big problems that's going to happen because u.s official i have to bring up a point with the u.s too that's what most people don't know is that they change the way they measure inflation 20, about 25 percent 
effect of the U.S. inflation is rent. Yes. And what they did to make it less, they have a thing called owner's equivalent rent, right? And with owner's equivalent, they ask me a survey where you where you arrange your place from, and then you use really rent. Owner's equivalent rent is like up five percent, give or take. Real rent is up like twenty percent, and so they use that data. When I when I looked at the, what inflation would be, if they use what they use in the seventies, the system, it would be around twenty twenty something percent. Well, for a craft, what 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 is said right now? Seven point nine percent. What is the way? Because I'm yeah. not no, no, but but but, but Brian, it's just like when it's just like when they do the labor survey in Belize. You understand? They will include people who only have work for one month. <laughs> and those people are considered employed. You understand? So, for one month. I mean, come on now. So all the rest of the years, you're there struggling. You're depending on somebody. But then you are still considered employed. So you know, they I think you see some workers. If they have used the inflation rate, the way they calculated in the 70s and early 80s, Inflation will be much higher, but they change it. Mm -hmm. They change the way to trick you. Yes, they change so it. So one, inflation is really bad and it's going to get worse. And like I tell you, do to me, I'm not worried, I'm not panicking. I think this is a good thing because what doesn't kill me will make me stronger. Yes. I am not vexed with government, I'm not vexed with nobody because once you take control of your life, the, the secret is... And this will be, we're going to move to wrap up right now because I see the time right. here. Go ahead. You need to take control of your life. The government is not your daddy or your mommy. The government is not there to serve you. The government is there to serve who help them get elected and it's not us. It's the business people who gave them money to campaign. Most of us are a lot of That's money. reality, but that's right. not how it should be. Right. Most know? of us are not necessarily the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That most of us, or a lot of us, went to vote because of what they gave us, whether it's a job or $50 or something or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you got paid for what you did. Yeah. Those people, the business community, was who sponsored that thing. Both international and national business people. Mm -hmm. Not everybody, though. I'm a business person, yeah. and I went to vote, and I. I yes, but yeah. you're an exception. Yeah, you. so I, yes. I'm not in the last so, category. <laughs> so, so what you have to understand: the government is not working for us. Yeah, it's working for the people with capital. Yes, who sponsors them? It's just if somebody is sponsoring you, what do you do? So you can't depend on... Who pays the paper for the tune? So you need to understand one thing. Yes. These people who are running the world want a global revolution. They said it. Uh, they call it the Great, great reset. reset. Reset is another word for revolution. Start over. New thing happening. Yes. Right? So you either join them and when you join them they want you to be their slave. Yes. Literally. Or uh, you find a way, like the Amish, the people I admire the most, not the Midnight, the Midnight is a medium bird, and the Amish went to the extreme. They didn't build a car, they didn't even have cell phones, nothing, they did nothing from before the Industrial Revolution. Yes. They did nothing. And they survived, and the US government can't do them nothing when COVID was happening. They didn't social distance, they didn't wear masks, yeah. nothing. Yeah. You have to understand. How is the US that, yeah, that happened they, too? To survive in the rural areas, you will have to find a way to become more self sufficient. And the community can be only you. And that's a love that why you had said the love. love. That's a love. love is because, for instance, I don't speak Spanish very well. I don't want to go to school. <laughs> so, if I am to survive, maybe somebody who can speak Spanish might be useful to me. Yeah. So, you need other people. You need to link with other people of like mind. You need love to survive. Your money will alone will do it. And three, 
And this is very important that we have to understand. Do not panic no matter what they tell you. Do not panic. Um, sit back, think what's the best way you could get around it. Don't because oh government say oh this or that you have to go do this. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't. That's, that's why I did you when know, were pressuring people and so on. I just didn't do it. I just you know, yeah. found a way around their system. <laughs> and, you know, and so, and so I want to say um, because we really need to wrap up. Yes. Um, I want to just just remind people that. We just always have to start to don't only watch what the what the mainstream media is telling you. And when I say mainstream media, I mean CNN, CNN Fox, Fox they MSNBC, go, yeah, ABC, Love FM, <laughs> Channel Five, Channel Seven. They have bosses. Yeah, they have bosses. They're paid. It's who it's who pays them that calls the tune. All right, straight like that. Um, but you have to, you have to really start to think for yourself, start to look and analyze, listen to those, per listen to the other side, so that you can have a balanced perspective. You know, listen to the other side, see if what the other side is saying, so that you could decipher and you know, through it all and see what is the truth. What is it? What do you see as the truth? You won't know everything. I understand that. We don't, none of us know everything. However, we have to make an effort to, 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 to be wise in our decision making. And that can only come about if we try to ensure that we hear different views. Don't close up your mind and not hear the other side. You see, now if, if you know for a fact that those people are leading you astray and you know for a fact that they are not doing it in your best interest, then yeah, I mean, you possibly don't want to be listening to them. You may still need to, to hear, the, hear what they're up to. You understand what I'm saying? Because you still have to be strategic and you have to be tactical in whatever you do. So with that said, I want to thank everybody. Brian, I want to thank you. As always, as always, thank you. This, this show is about education. This, this show is about, you know, being informative, educating people, you know, um, and just empowering people well, as well. This show over time is going to grow because it's taking a half for people to know about it and know that it exists. But over time, just like everything else. And Facebook, I will tell you, Brian, that um, Facebook has reduced our distribution. As a matter of fact, we have to notice. I can show you all the restrictions. Um, we were restricted for 90 days. And it's because I have been po posting different things. And I'm the, as the main person who was dealing. You know, it's my account that was being used for the show and linked to the show. And so, and now we're back on another um, 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 mile um, a month and so even before that it was reduced from the time we started dealing with COVID and so from July when we started they immediately started reduce this reduce 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 and so hence the reason now um, even though we're coming out of it we still know that we're still restricted for example I got um, I got a I got um, you know, put in Facebook jail for one month simply for posting um, something whereby I said, okay, for six months, you know, you know, I had posted to my to the people. I said for six months I was I have been restricted, and um, for posting one video, I remember one video at a time. It had um, like six months ago. Anyway, they banned me for another month. They they they, they, they haven't banned that person for. <laughs> that has that, but they banned me. So I'm just saying it's restricted, and so hence the reason why even this platform. Listen, I have seen people who thank you, thank you, Adolfo. I have seen people if all I did was just laugh, 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 and just put up um, jokes, jokes, comedic jokes, 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 or or, or push, or push to get the vaccine, push to get the vaccine, push. Away. Oh my gosh. Facebook would have had, would have allowed us, like I can't even put an ad, Facebook 
are restricts us that we can't even put an ad and we don't have that distribution they, they, they stop it it's only people who want to watch a show they will make sure they watch the show so they have blocked that simply because of, of, of my position really and, and the position of my guests who come on so it's also the guests and with that said like I said we are also on other platforms so you will be able to um, see us of course on the other platforms I think it's what all uh, Marvin I think LinkedIn YouTube um, and uh, Rumble, it's, 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 it's a number of them. I, I think it's the different ones that. Um, I'm not sure, but he has a list of them that he now has us on. Yeah, he has us, he has us on a lot of them. So um, let me just say, I think it's um, Twitch, Twitter, MX Cloud, what is it? The LinkedIn, Daily Motion. Um, just a number of them so we, I'm gonna start to put those on the flyer too so just to let you know that we, we are on those and so we're not gonna only depend on Facebook who wants to watch on Facebook it's still gonna be an option but we are on other entities and I'm doing so just because at the end of the day if I can't continue to have Facebook censor the show yeah. okay so with that said this show is brought to you through the courtesy of C Belize Vacation Rentals C Belize uh, uh, tours and events planning. Five miles Philip Golson Highway, that's only one minute away from Hallover Bridge. So if you want to just get away, you know, for a while, a weekend or a week or whatever, we have awesome uh, uh, rentals at different uh, costs. And we also have this beautiful infinity pool, crystal clear, uh, six feet deep for those who want to dive. There is a, 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 a section, I think almost four feet, three feet, I think eight inches for those who don't know how to swim, who wants to stay in that area. And also it's 40 foot long. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's quite a big pool that you, that's sufficient for you to really enjoy yourself. It overlooks, we have an overwater deck facing the sea. Um, so you can hang out there. We have another deck. Uh, we sell drinks, of course. And so it's just a lovely uh, time that you can have just to just to relax and just to you know just to rejuvenate and rewind. Visit visit us. Our number is 615-4485, 615-4465, and 615-4467. Again, 615-4485, 65 and 67. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead next week. We're gonna we're gonna talk about. I think it's a marijuana. Um, um, it's a bill that I already had um, someone asking me to be on the show. He wants to be on the show to discuss that. Uh, so with that that is what we're looking at for next week. I told him sure. Um, he just wanted to see what what they were gonna say today at the house meeting, and so we're gonna discuss that. So with that said, um, thank you very much. Tune in next week, same time, same place. Have a wonderful and blessed day. And let's take it away with the Sea Belize uh, ad. Good night, everybody.